Hi everyone, Lee Arkinall from Cyborg Security here today to explore the behaviors and TTPs of an APT group named Volt Typhoon. Now, Volt Typhoon has been getting mentioned in the news lately. Back in February, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, put out a report documenting the observed TTPs and behaviors and technical findings of an attack. And then just recently, they put out a fact sheet for leaders in environments on best practices or some steps that they can take to best prepare for Vault Typhoon. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at what Vault Typhoon is, where they're coming from, previous TTPs and behaviors, and how we can best prepare ourselves in a proactive manner to look for these adversaries in our environment and how cyborg security can really help you out and aid in your threat hunting journey. All right, let's go. So I mentioned that CISA had pushed out an advisory talking about Bull Typhoon. Well, this was really a joint cybersecurity advisory. It, it had a lot of different agencies involved. You can see CISA's in there, the uh, United States Environmental Protection Agency. Other agencies that were involved in the investigation I definitely helped out with this. But it's titled, PRC State-Sponsored Actors Compromise and Maintain Persistence Across the U.S. Critical Infrastructure. So if you haven't had time to read any more or recent Intel reports, we're really starting to focus on critical infrastructure because we're realizing that there's a lot of things involved with it that aren't secure simply because they were either designed back in the 50s before everything was connected to the internet, or we're still just catching up to the whole idea of we have to secure these devices that are controlling uh, water plants and so on. But what I like about this is that the report itself gets technical and they provide a lot of resources that you can do research with. So if we scroll through, um, come to the table of contents, the first thing that stands out to me and the first thing I'm going to investigate is the technical details. I'm a threat hunter. These are the things I'm looking for. I'm looking for observed TTPs, so recon or the, the high-level tactics, recon, initial access, execution, persistence, and so on. They provide intel based on that, which is great because those are the things that we need to focus on. Uh, also, if we check out pages 32 through 37, we have the Vol Typhoon Observed Commands, a Living Off the Land Activity, Indicators of Compromise, and Miter Tactics and Techniques, which we're actually going to jump to. I'll let you uh, read this on your own because uh, there's a lot in here to cover, um, and we really don't have that much time here. So when looking at Appendix A, for the Vol Typhoon Observed Commands and Living Off the Land Activity, the goal here is to take what we see and try to make it as general as possible that will fit our environment but still capture stuff that is related to this attack. So what we don't want to do is just copy and paste this, because then you're treating it like an IOC, but you still look for the behaviors uh, and identify what they're looking for. For example, if we take a look at these two WMI commands that were thrown, we see that the first one is WMINC. CISA says it appears to be an attempt to use WMIC, but it was misspelled. Um, so that can tell you that, you know what, that command probably wasn't successful. But following down that right at the end, we see WMIC process get name process ID. So normally this is uh, part of the discovery effort of the adversary. They're trying to get into your environment. They're trying to figure out what exists and what they can use to their advantage. As we scroll down, uh, we don't see any more WMICs, but I will tell you what I like is that we're seeing more command line arguments and technical information there than we are in the Cures Compromise. Uh, and why do I bring that up? So if we take a look at Appendix B, this MD5 hash or this SHA-256 for the bright metric agent.exe. Now, don't get me wrong, IOCs are important. If we think that we are being attacked by the same organization, what we can do, we can simply take the IOCs like bright metric agent.exe, the MD5 hash, or the SHA-256 hash, throw that into our environment, and search on it and say, do you see any of these artifacts? And if there is nothing, there is the possibility that you get a false sense of security where you say, you know what, I don't see it. You know, so we're not compromised. At the end of the day, though, if they just spelled this differently or changed it to just metric agent, all of a sudden your tools and your systems and possibly your searchers aren't finding it because it's named something different. Or if they change the code a bit and that the hashes change. The indicators of compromise are quick wins. They're good tools for that, especially when it comes to 
a quick question of are we compromised or, or, or do we see this in our environment? That will provide you with a very, very quick one to say, yep, we saw the hash. We know this hash is malicious. Let's go into instant response mode. But to be more proactive, what we want to do is focus on these types of commands, the living off the land binaries, all the command line arguments that come with it as well. You know, once again, you don't want to copy and paste because if we take a look at this and we see that it's ping dash N1, which is saying, you know, I only do it once with a timeout of one millisecond. If we're searching only on that and the adversary changes one of these ones to a two, then you know what? We're, uh, we're going to miss that activity as well. So how do we focus on behaviors? How do we get proactive about this? So we're going to get past the indicators of compromise and go straight to Appendix C. This is where I like to live because these are the behaviors that are going to be observed or exhibited by uh, any adversary, really. Not all the same. They all don't always do the same one, but there's a good chance that all adversaries have the same goal. Like they want to gather victim host information or they want to search open website and domains or, you know, you name it. Whatever these tactics are or these goals of the adversaries, they're probably going to span across. But the way that you can start, now if you do play the attribution game, the way that you can start figuring out who this is is say, well, you know what? We see that Volt Typhoon uses hands-on keyboard or command and scripting interpreter. They use PowerShell. They use Unix shell. And they use WMI. If you start picking and choosing these different techniques from different tactics or columns like valid accounts, exploitation or privilege escalation, then you can start painting a better picture and say, you know what? CISA produced this document that said these are the t uh, TTPs and behaviors that Volt Typhoon uses. We've seen five out of the 23 and we're going to continue hunting on it because we're looking for more activity to correlate to the same APT group. Now, that's not always easy. That might take some time, but that's eventually the goal. Now, we can also jump over the Meyer tag matrix. And what you can do here is they provide the same information or not the same from that report, but they provide techniques used by Vault Typhoon again. These are from prior attacks. So what you can do is compare the CISA report to other reports that you've seen uh, that you can extract from the MyAttack matrix, compare the TTPs and see what they've changed or what stayed the same. This helps with prioritization as well. So if you see a bunch of different TTPs lining up and then some new ones or some old ones, I would definitely prioritize the ones that are seen in the majority of the attack. And then I would start going down the ladder and prioritizing like, all right, well, what tactic are we looking for? We're looking for execution. We're looking for persistence. We're looking for defense evasion. You name it. But you can start mentally and I guess physically documenting what you're looking for throughout this process and planning out a hunt. And when you plan for this hunt, and then you take a look at the TTPs and behaviors, you're now in a proactive approach. And we're, while we're not looking for IOCs that create a binary uh, situation where if you see a malicious hash, you know it's malicious. But if you don't see a malicious hash, that doesn't mean you're not compromised. Um, so we're trying to get away from that mentality. So one of the behaviors that Volt Typhoon has leveraged in the past is abusing a Windows management instrumentation. Now I'm going to say abusing because yes, they're using it, but they're using it for nefarious purposes. So where do we come along and how do we help you in your threat hunting? Well, first we created a Volt Typhoon uh, hunt package collection. We looked at all the reports that have been published lately and in the past, and we said, you know what, what hunt packages do we have or what hunt packages do we need to create that all line up with Vault Typhoon activity? Now, this isn't an exhaustive list, um, but these are behaviors that we've seen time and time again um, associated with Vault Typhoon. Um, and this one, we're going to focus on the WMIC, Windows Internal Discovery and Enumeration. So jumping into the hunt package, of course, we can check out the description to see, you know, what is this looking for? It will identify the potentially malicious use of WMI, Windows Management Interface, utilized for local enumeration and discovery of a host. So we'd like to point out potentially malicious because WMI can be used for enumeration and discovery in a positive, legitimate reason. If your admin is troubleshooting or something or needs to get information, that's what they're, they might be using. How we tweak it is we're looking for things um, to aid that uh, investigation. We're going to use Sysmon as usual. And I'm going to come down here to the Splunk query, and I'm going to just click on Splunk endpoint for Sysmon. I copy and paste that, and we're going to jump into Splunk. Now, what we do is we provide you a query that 
already captures the intent of uh, what an adversary could be looking for. So if we look at the query logic itself, we're focusing on the term WMIC. Then we're looking for command line contains WMIC and path, or command line contains WMIC and get, or WMIC and list. So all the parameters that WMIC can use to discover information about your machine. And we also created a two minute bucket because if an adversary is doing this, they might be using automation instead of hands-on keyboard. And we're, what we're doing is we're saying, we're looking for all these events within a certain time frame. Because if we stretch out too far, we might start seeing a legitimate activity. The, the goal is to try and reduce as much false positives as we can in your environment, but at the same time, leaving enough wiggle room that you kind of have to do some work and figure out what's a true pause and what's a false pause of a year. And um, of course, if we can use data aggregation, we will. In this case, Plunk enables us to use the where command as well. So we're looking for events in a two minute bucket where the count of WMI commands is greater than two. Uh, and that comes from the here, the distinct count of WMI command. And as you can see, we have some data. The first thing we, I, I always recommend is to validate that the, uh, the data makes sense and matches the query logic. So we see WMIC path, git, or list. And if we come down to the, to the command line arguments itself, we see path, we see git, and we see list. So we hit all three in a single search from different time frames and two different hosts. From here, you can definitely start following the parent process if you want to breadcrumb that way. Um, or if you want to look for other activity that's happening, you can you know, remove the time bucket and see if you have any more WMIC activity um, based on you know, what you're looking at. There's a million ways you can take that investigation. But from our perspective, we're trying our best to save you time in the research, save you time in building a query so that you can grab this and run and get to a proactive status um, so that if, and, and if this is the case, I, I really wish you luck, but if they are in your environment, you can start finding them sooner and getting there bef before they reach their or their ultimate goals, whatever it may be. Well, I, I hope this helped. I hope this put into perspective the wonderfulness that is threat hunting and the proactive approach that, if you can get there, is very valuable. Um, because if you can find the adversary as they're moving towards their goal versus once they reach their goal, you're in a much better situation in general. Um, but once again, thank you very much for spending your time here. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. Um, good luck out there. And as always, happy hunting.